Welcome back in. Shannon Bower is a former Maryland State Police officer and FBI firearms instructor, and he's written a book about the criminal trial of an off-duty ICE agent who was convicted of assault with a dangerous weapon outside a famous Georgetown bar back in 2010. Bower testified as an expert at that trial, says it gave him some insight into the criminal justice system. Shannon, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. You must have had quite the experience to write a book about it, but tell us briefly what happened. Uh, the off-duty ICE agent was out with friends, and uh, they went to dinner, and then they stopped at another place for a nightcap. Uh, they wanted to leave because the service was so bad, and uh, he went up to pay the bill and had trouble paying the bill. <laughs> so he talked to the manager and asked the manager if he spoke Spanish. He wanted to keep the private conversation private. The manager said yes. He explained it to him, and then the manager had him ejected. Uh, it's... Uh, it's a strange set of circumstances. He was carrying a gun at the time, and the bouncer that picked him up and carried him out said that when he got outside, he set him down and Heath turned around with the gun. Uh, but the circumstances are different completely. Uh, Heath said when he, came, when he felt the gun coming loose, and when he set him down, he went to reseat the gun, and the bouncer just grabbed for it. Uh, and that's the, the gist of the whole story, really. And he was convicted here in Washington, D.C.? Yes, he was. Okay, so you testified as an expert at trial, and you say he's innocent. He spent uh, at least four days in jail, is that four right? Four days in jail, a fine, and probation. So what's your takeaway here? Uh, I had never encountered a case like that. I had arrested thousands of people. I had testified in court hundreds and hundreds of times. And I never experienced anything like this. Uh, little by little, every day, you would see these little mistakes. And by themselves, they don't mean much. But when you add them all together, they affected the whole outcome of the trial. Right. We're supposed to have this infrastructure of due process to protect people's yes. rights. But of course, we convict innocent people. It happens. So what is the judicial soup? And, and what needs to change in the criminal justice system based on your experience and what you uh, learned? There's a, a number of innocent people that we've, the last several years, we've heard of them all the time. Uh, and it's not an uncommon story. But the innocent people in jail are not the problem. The problem is how they got there. If you had enough innocent programs where you could take all the innocent people out of jail, that wouldn't stop them from coming in the other end. Uh, you need judicial reform uh, in the sense of not incarcerating innocent people to stop the problem. And we hear a lot right now talking about police reform, which is one component yes. of the criminal justice system. Do you think there needs to be police reform as well? Oh, yes, yes. There's a, a lot that they can teach. Uh, normally, when you talk about police reform, it's, it's almost like having a barrel of apples and taking the apples out of the barrel and inspecting each one, putting them back. Well, you shouldn't let the bad apples in to begin with. In other words, police reform should start with recruiting and training uh, from the very beginning. Uh, a lot of times when you have officers that have done heinous crimes that you hear about or read about, they have a history of it. Uh, so they should have been stopped a long time ago. Practically, how do you do that at, at the level that, that you used to serve at? I mean, when you're looking at recruiting, we've already got retention issues. We've already got talent issues and able to recruit both, you know, in major cities across the country. Yes. How do you, how do you balance that with, with the need to make sure that, you know, those bad apples aren't in? I think it's extremely difficult. There's over 18,000 police departments in this country. Over half of them are 10 men or less. 10 persons or less. Uh, so they rely on other people to do their training. Uh, so you have uh, what they call post police officer standards of training in each state, uh, and they need to combine it together to have a uniform standard. Uh, and then it's the supervision, not just the selection, the supervision and training. Uh, because when you hear about these people, uh, sometimes they have all these offenses in their background that they sh really shouldn't still be on the job. Uh, at the same time, the majority of officers out there, I think, do a great job. They're working hard. Uh, they're not looking for any kudos or anything. They just want to do the right job. And bringing it back to the book here, a conviction stays with you for a lifetime, and, and you say that he's innocent. How has it affected his life? Uh, for a long time, it was problematic. He went, moved back to Texas, uh, and he found that his mom was very sick. Uh, and he took care of her for about 14 months, I think, before she passed. Uh, and uh, she was living in a house that he had bought her. Uh, so that was all right with that. Recently, the last couple of years, he's done pretty well. I say pretty well. He had a good job. Uh, he met a gal. Uh, I don't know if they're married, but they're living together. Uh, he's a happier person now. But it's still with him. 
Sure. And it, just quickly here at the end, this came from off-duty officers being able to carry their firearms. Do you think that's one of the forms that reforms that we should look at? Uh, no, I think that that's pretty much set. It, the court was upset with him because they have a policy where you can't carry your firearm when you're drinking alcohol. And that's what he was doing. He was violating a policy. All right. Well, Shannon Bower, thank you so much for taking the time to join us.